Hi everyone. So this is going to be mixed media morsel number 12. Someone had asked about how I created my uh, little book when we were doing number 11 and doing the torn paper strips and I had shown the little books that I was making. And so I thought I'd show you how to make these uh, because they are so easy and they just use common, ordinary, everyday sort of things you have around the house. So what I'm starting with is a little, little Debbie snack cake box. Okay, this is one of the long, skinny type. And it's about, I think it's almost an inch and a half. Yeah, it's almost an inch and a half, about an, an inch and three-eighths uh, on, the, on the skinny end. So all I do is, and I've got s several of these in different stages so I can pretty much show you without having to do it all. So this is the box. Okay. I take that box and cut the long sides out. Okay, that would be these pieces here. So all I do is trim trim up the sides of each one and then, and then snip this off. Okay. And one end of the box was opened and I leave the other end glued shut. And I also leave that little tab that I just cut off when I took that piece off. I leave that little tab in there too because it's just extra, um, it's just extra thickness in that spine. So you have two layers of cardboard, one on Sorry guys, I moved my camera and so I'm a little bit off, off center. I moved my camera over a little because I was getting a shadow cast from my phone being up there. So you have two layers of cardboard on the spine. You have this piece and you have this piece. And then with these tabs still glued on the end, that's a third layer of thickness that you'll have there. And you'll need that and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so, <clears throat> so all we're doing is trimming off the skinny end. I mean, skinny strips, I mean. Okay, so now you're in, you end up with like a big long journal, okay? Now, I had measured mine to be a particular size, and since this was um, about four and a quarter across, I decided to make it four and a quarter across the width also. So all I did was mark, mark it at four and a quarter. And I believe I did that on the inside so I could see it. Yeah, so you're just gonna take this and take it right up to the fold, mark it at four and a quarter here, mark it at four and a quarter here. Draw a line if you want, cut it. But actually, no, wait, I didn't cut it, I scored it. Okay, so measure out four and a quarter here, four and a quarter there. And then use your ruler and score it because I actually folded it there. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. All right. I'm going to have to remind myself of what I've done. I've done so many of these little, well, started, started so many of these. Okay, I did four and a quarter here. And... Four and a quarter there, okay? And you can score this with anything you want that will leave a little impression there in the uh, cardboard. I'm gonna use a, uh, a stylus. Got a little round ball on the end. It's an embossing stylus. Okay, and then you just run, you know, run your, run it down to make a little score line, okay? So then you fold on that score. See, it folds pretty easily. Okay. Then I just cut this off at this line <clears throat> where this fold is on this side. So basically, all you're gonna do is just kind of peek underneath there, find the fold, and I just marked the underside of this piece. Okay, I just marked it like that underneath there 
because this doesn't really have to be exact. It's 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 just a, to give you a general idea of where you want to cut. All right, so I have that mark on both sides now. Well, I did something wrong here because they're in different spots. What did I do? I marked the wrong place here. Okay, <laughs> I marked the wrong fold. Okay, so it's this side I should be marking. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is where, uh, when this is folded over, it meets this fold right here, okay? So I'm just gonna cut a line there. Not cut a line, I'm gonna draw a line there. Now you don't really need this to, this piece to come exactly to the fold because then the book won't be able to fold very well, close. So I'm gonna cut it across just inside that line. And that looks a little bit crooked to me. I'm not sure why it looks crooked, but it does. Hmm. Oh well, it's not that important. So I'm gonna cut on the inside of the of the line just a little. And you can trim it more if you need to once you get this piece cut off. Okay. So you can see how that folds right down into the cover. And I cut off enough that I'm, I'm past the fold, so this will close, open and close easily. If this is too long, then you're gonna have a problem, so you may need to trim it, <coughs> trim it just a little. And I'm gonna cut this one just a little to match the other side, because it was a little off for some reason. Maybe the box was not square, I don't know. Okay. All right, so then you do the same thing to this side. And if you're gonna do several of these, what I did was I kept this little piece that I that I uh, trimmed off. And then when you get to the other side, see all you have to do is lay this here, match it up, and cut it off. And then you may need to trim it a little once you get the, um, you know, once you get it folded in. But I haven't scored this yet, so I'm not gonna fold it. But Anyway, once you get both sides done, then all you do is take some double-sided tape, and you need to use some heavy-duty type tape, like um, score, pa uh, score tape. It works the best because this is just folded, so it you know it wants to come, it wants to pull back. So you got to use something a heavy adhesive. So I use something like this so that it'll hold it down pretty well. Or if you don't mind waiting, you can use something like tacky glue, you know, something like that, and then you can just uh, clamp it or put heavy books on top of it to hold it down until it's dry. So once you get both sides folded in and um, you've got the adhesive under there holding it, then it looks like this, okay? So you have your little book. And then at this point is where I would just trim anything that's ragged or uneven because it, it is kind of hard to cut those those pieces off the side because the box is intact you know so it's kind of hard sometimes and you, you might get a little jaggedy edge so if that happens <clears throat> you just trim it off at this point and that's all I do to make this little book and I decorated the outside with the paper strips Okay, that's what this is. Okay. And then on the inside, I haven't done this yet on the inside, but on, mm, knocking things over here. On the inside, I put a piece of painted paper where I was cleaning off my brayer. I put that on the inside. And put, you know, something like that, just a piece of magazine text, whatever, just rolling off the brayer, you know, just to have some kind of colored paper. You can use scrapbook paper with a pattern, you know, anything you want to use, you can do that. All right, once you get, once you get your inside paper um, on to cover up that part of the box, then all I did was took some of these little, um, hair ties, uh, hair elastics, and 
I used like three of them. You can put more in if you want, depending on how thick you want your uh, how thick you want your book to be. But <clears throat> these actually are kind of small. Not all ponytail holders are are this small, but these are kind of small. So if your book is taller, you're gonna want longer longer ones. These just fit, and they're and they're kind of snug, which is good. I mean, it's good to have them snug, better than too loose. But the reason that, um, because they're snug, that's the reason I was saying you want to keep that extra little paper tab under there and keep it in because it just gives it a nice thickness on each end where that elastic is going to be pulling. Okay? So, you can put two or three rubber bands, or I mean, uh, hair elastics on there and then you take whatever papers you're going to use. I've got three pieces of um, mixed media paper I think it is. Or maybe it's cardstock. Yeah, I think this one's cardstock. And um, I, I cut them to the right size, folded it. You know, I scored each one, folded it, and then you just slip those underneath the hair elastic and it holds them in place in your book. Okay. So, like I said, you can add, you know, three, four would work fine in there, okay, because you got plenty of room. And um, that's what I did. So, that's a real easy little, um, little book to make. And then you can do any kind of cover. You can do the morsel number 11, which is the torn strips. You can do uh, the collage one would be fun. You can do a solid sheet of paper and cover the, uh, cover, the cover <laughs> with a solid piece. And um, it could be something like um, a piece that you've done the uh, plastic wrap on. Or you can use the tissue technique where we crunched up the tissue and put it on. So there's a lot of different mixed media techniques you can use to do your covers with. But that's this morsel. And um, y'all make some books and show me, show me what you've done. Because, like I said, they're so easy. And you typically have <clears throat> little boxes like this around the house. I'm getting ready to make one out of a granola bar box, too. This one's a little bit bigger. And... Um, I, I'm actually, I'm thinking that when I do this book, I'm thinking that I'm going to use it for my morsels since this one, you know, it started coming apart. So I took all the pages out, but what I did was I got, um, I got some of those Tim Holtz, um, ring binders. Okay. And so this will go show you. <clears throat> This will go inside the spine uh, for this type of book, and it comes with the little um, the little brads here that you uh, attach this with. Okay, so um, maybe when I get around to doing this one, I'll do a video and show you how I'm making it. But I'll just have that in there, and then uh, because my pages aren't this big, you know, this wide, I'll. Um, I'll cut this down. I'll cut this down here so it won't be quite as long. So that'll be sitting in the rings like right about there. You know, so I'll cut some off there and then have have a little notebook. And I'll probably just do another cover. Uh, I think I have some stickers like this left, uh, left over. But if not, I've got other stickers um, that I've painted and, and also I'll have something I'm sure that I can use but um, I kind of like the idea of the ring the ring binder being a, a stationary part of the spine I do have some of those little individual ring bind ring uh, binder rings that I could put on the ends of this but I just it's, it's just more wobbly when it's like that and this is a little bit more secure I just prefer the secure over the more wobbly so that's what I'm thinking about doing for my mixed media morsels now this is just a single layer of the cardboard so it's you know much more flimsy so I'll be adding more cardboard to 
to this to make it a little stiffer and more more sturdy. And then stuff like this where this was glued, you know, at the manufacturing place. I'll, I'll, I'll add more glue to that to make sure that that's, you know, glued. And then I'll add, I saved another piece from the box. This is another uh, one of the ends or, yeah, edges, I think. And I'm going to add an additional doubled piece um, to that just to make sure that that's real sturdy. So there you go. That's all there is to that. And um, like I said, I'll try and remember and film, you know, once I do start making this one, just so you can see what I'm doing with the little, um, the little Tim Holtz binder rings and, and, um, okay, so that's it. And, uh, we'll see you again soon on the next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.